over my journey, over the mountain, over the mountain, yeah, and through the deep end. Jesus has said, I, well, the Lord said, I never Lord leave you. Said, oh, 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 I know that's a promise divine. That's a promise that never can fail. Oh, 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 heavenly, heavenly, heavenly son. son. I'm on this heavenly son. Uh, good morning, for indeed this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. I'm Brother Marv Thorne, and I will be delivering uh, your message this morning. I uh, bring you greetings from the Trinity Gardens Church of Christ, where our minister is Brother Timothy Daniels. Let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we approach you right now with our hearts bowed, with our heads bowed and our hearts humbled. First and foremost, thanking you for being our God and giving us the privilege to be numbered among your children. We thank you for your unlimited supply of grace, your unlimited supply of mercy. We thank you for just being loyal to us and loving us more than we could ever imagine loving ourselves. Please forgive us of the sin that we've committed. Please bless those uh, who are in need, those who are without electricity still, those who are without water, those who may have even lost a loved one, we ask that you comfort them. Those who have illness, please return them to their normal portion of health and strength. Be with us as we uh, study from your word that we would listen with open and receptive hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Once again, uh, good morning. Our message this today is found in Matthew chapter 7 verses 24 and 25 Matthew chapter 7 I'm reading from the New International Version therefore everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock the rain came down the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because its foundation was on the rock. The title of today's message, Every Storm is Different. Every Storm is Different. This week, the state of Texas experienced winter storm Uri. It was a storm that was like no other. I can personally attest that I had never dealt with anything like this in my lifetime living here in Houston. It was challenging. Some would call it brutal, life-changing, and most definitely memorable. Many lost running water, electricity, food, and in some cases, their lives. On Friday the 19th, Houston Mayor Sylvester Turner shared that he was, in, in a news conference rather, he shared that he was asked, how did Winter Storm Uri compare with Hurricane Harvey or any other natural disaster he managed as mayor of Houston? His re reply was, every storm is different. Every storm is different. In the Bible, we're able to read about different storms. In Genesis chapter 7, beginning at verse number 10, we're able to read about what I call Noah's storm. <clears throat> the Bible says in Genesis chapter 7, verse number 10, And after the seven days, the flood waters came on the earth in the 600th year of Noah's life on the 17th day of the second month. On that day, all the springs of the great deep burst forth and the floodgates of heavens, of heavens, of the heavens rather, were open. 
and rain fell on the earth 40 days and 40 nights. Let's drop down to verse number 18. The Bible says, The waters rose and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the surface of the water. They rose greatly on the earth, and all the high mountains under the entire heavens were covered. The waters rose and covered the mountains to a depth of more than 20 feet. Every living thing that moved on the earth perished. Birds, livestock, wild animals, all the creatures that swarm over the earth, and all mankind. The Bible speaks of another storm in Mark chapter 4 that I like to refer to as the disciple storm. You know, don't get it mixed up. Just because we are disciples of Christ doesn't mean that we will not experience any storms. Listen to what the Bible says in Mark chapter 4, beginning at verse 35. That day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the storm sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. The Bible speaks of another storm in Acts chapter 27 that I like to refer to as Paul's storm. Acts chapter 27 and listen to what the Bible says in Acts chapter 27, beginning at verse number 18. We took such a violent battering from the storm that the next day they began to throw the cargo overboard. On the third day, they threw the ship's tackle overboard with their own hands. When neither sun nor stars appeared, for many days, and the storm continued raging, we finally gave up all hope of being saved. Drop down to verse number 24. Actually, 23. Last night, an angel of, of the God whose I am and whom I serve stood beside me and said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar. And God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. So keep your courage, men, for I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. Nevertheless, we must run aground on some island. Every storm is different. As we look at these different storms, Noah's storm, the disciples' storm, and Paul's storm, each one has its own set of unique nuances. We look at Noah's storm. It was the first rainstorm, the first storm that took place on the earth. The Bible says that waters flow from heaven and from earth. It lasted a long time. The waters had gotten so high until they had covered the mountains and everything that lived on the earth died unless it was on the ark that Noah had built. And keep in mind, Noah built that ark according to God's instructions. It was a chosen vessel to protect God's chosen people. In the disciples storm, we see that Jesus said, Let's travel to the other side. They were in the water traveling without notice. 
a storm arose. No weather bulletin was provided. No bad weather alert was given on the cell phones. It just arose. Mark, Mark records that the storm had gotten so violent that the water had entered into the boat. The disciples were afraid. They got scared, just as many of us would. If we were out in the middle of a body of water and the water started coming in, we'd be scared too, wouldn't we? He went, woke up Jesus. Jesus rebuked the wind, be it the waves, peace be still. In Paul's storm, we see that they too were traveling on water. And his storm, Paul had advised the captain to travel in a different direction. A light wind came, and that light wind over time became more violent. However, while Paul was on that boat, it had gotten so bad that they lightened their load by, overthrowing, by throwing cargo overboard. They even threw the ship's tackle or the ship's steering devices overboard as well. The passengers gave up hope. However, in the middle of that storm, an angel of the Lord came to Paul and said, everything is going to be all right. Each storm is different. As we look at, look closer at each of these storms, each storm not only is comprised of different events, but they are comprised of different lessons. When we look at Noah's storm, we learn that God is able to build us up so that we can weather the storm. When we look at our passage, Matthew said in Matthew 7, 24, well, Jesus says in Matthew 7, 24, that whoever obeys his word would be like the man who built his house on a rock. And when the storm came, the winds blew, that house was able to stand because it had been built on a rock. But when we look at Noah, this teaches us that God is able to build us so that we can weather the storm. Before the, water, before the flood waters arrived, Noah was given specific instructions by God to build an ark. He didn't just say, Noah, get some wood and build an ark. He gave Noah the specific height, width, depth, even the type of wood to use, uh, what, to put, uh, to, uh, what to put in between each piece of wood to insulate it from the water on the outside. God gave Noah instructions to build the ark. Why? Because it was going to be needed to weather the storm. And my brothers and sisters in Christ, what I say to us on this morning is that God is able to build us so that when a storm comes, we can weather it. Just as he gave Noah instructions to build that ark, and the ark was able to provide safety to God's people, the word of God is able to build us and equip us with the things that we need internally so that when storms come, we can weather those storms. So the question that I have for us today is how are we built? What is the foundation that we stand on? There's no foundation better than Christ Jesus on which we're able to stand. And the way that we're able to stand on Christ Jesus is to obey the instructions that have been given to us in the word of God. The second storm, the disciples storm. This storm teaches us that God is able to deliver us no matter how bad the storm is. When we look at the events that took place, the water had entered into the boat. And my brothers and sisters in Christ, sometimes storms can get so bad that things on the outside can enter the boats of our lives, into the boats of our homes, and even into the boats of our spiritual walk with the Lord. But the key is, remember, that no matter how bad the storm is, that God is still able to deliver us from it. It's never too early to call upon the name of the Lord. The, the storm arose. The disciples saw the damage. They got scared and they ran to Jesus. But I want to suggest to us on this morning that when the storm arises, no matter if we are afraid or if we are not afraid yet, no matter if damage has been done or if damage has yet to be done, we can still call upon the Lord to deliver us from our storm. He's always available. The Bible says that he was in the bottom of the ship sleeping. 
regardless if he was sleeping or not, Jesus is still Jesus. <coughs> and, excuse me, Jesus is still Jesus. <coughs> and he's able to deliver us from our storms. All we got to do is remember to trust him, access him, take advantage of the access that we have to his power, and call upon him to deliver us from our storms. No matter how violent they are, no matter how uncomfortable they may be, he is still able to control everything in our lives, including the stuff that we cannot control. So let us call upon him when we find ourselves in the storm. In Paul's storm. We're able to see that God is able to give us guidance even in the middle of the storm. As children of God, storms are challenging. However, like Paul, remember that we are spiritual anchors for, anchors for others. Even though the storm was going on, Paul was able to speak a message of hope to those who were traveling on that boat with him. The Bible teaches us that when that angel spoke to Paul, he told Paul that everything was going to be all right and that he had been given the lives of everyone who had traveled with him. Let us be mindful of the fact, as God's children, when we're in the middle of the storm, that because of our connection, we may be the only, amen, somebody, we may be, only, we may be the only visible glimmer of hope that others around us who are going through a storm with us can see. Paul said, an angel talked to me, <coughs> and he said, everything will be all right. But the thing is, we got to remember is that we cannot give up hope. Even though things may look to be impossible, we can still rest our hope in the Lord. Paul said that the angel spoke to me and that I believe that it will be just as God said that it would. And after he spoke these words of hope to those who were traveling with them, he went on ahead and completed it by saying that even though things will be all right, this ship must run aground, letting them know that this storm may be bad and tumultuous right now, but it's going to end at some point. Look at what they did when they were in the storm. When it got bad, they threw things overboard. They threw over cargo. They threw over us portions of the ship's steering devices, which means that they had to solely depend upon God to guide them and to take care of them. And what I say to us this morning is that sometimes in the storm, it may be happening to us to get us to throw some things overboard. There may be some people in our lives we need to throw overboard. There may be some bad habits that we need to throw overboard. There may be some luxuries that, and material things that we've gotten attached to, to the point that we've rested our hope and have determined our life value by what we have. We may need to throw that stuff overboard so that the, so that the only one that we can rely on is Lord God. And remember that even if we're in a storm, and no matter how bad it is, that it will end at some point. As I mentioned earlier here in Houston, uh, <clears throat> we just experienced a winter storm. And all of the news reporters said that by the time Saturday come, that everything was going to be all right. I know Saturday may have seemed a long way away when we didn't have lights. I know Saturday may have seemed a far off when we didn't have running water. I know Saturday may have seemed a far off when we were just worried and uncertain about what the next day held, but we knew that as long as God kept blessing us to get up and say good morning, that we would make it to Saturday. And what I say to us, my brothers and sisters in Christ, just remember that as long as God is in control, that we will make it out of our storm. Every storm is different, but God's word is the same. Storms are powerful, but our God is more powerful. Storms are painful, but God is our healer. Storms can be tiresome, but God is our strength and refuge in the times of trouble. Storms are unpredictable, but our God is an unchanging God, for he is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Storms may cost us friends, but Jesus is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Let us remember that every storm is different, 
but the God that we serve is the same. Uh, storms may send us in different directions and give us a different set of experiences, but our God is an unchanging God. And no matter what we're going through, he is by our side. He will make sure that we're built and equipped to withstand it. He will make sure that he gives us guidance to navigate it. And then on his timing and according to his schedule, he will even deliver us from it. Every storm is different. As I get ready to close, there may be some today who've not yet, but who've not yet established a relationship with God. We do that through faith, repentance, and baptism. Hebrews 11, 6, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Repent of sin, Acts 17, 30. Be baptized in water for the remission of sin, Acts 2, 38. And for those of us who are Christians, I know sometimes life can be trying. But guess what? You're not in it alone. You don't have to do it and do all the heavy lifting by, by yourself. Just remember that God is by our side. Don't give up hope. His word is still powerful. He is still loyal. He is still loving. And he is still merciful. May God continue to bless you and keep you. At this time, I give you over to the brothers.